Hello, and welcome back to Hemophyte Breakdowns. Today, I want to talk about running, and specifically how running can influence your HEMA performance and your HEMA training. So, uh, specifically, I'm going to talk about three different kinds of running or three different running styles that you can do to improve different aspects of your tournament performance. The first is distance running. So, what I'm doing right here is I'm just setting a pace, and the idea is to just keep that pace going for as long as you can sustain it. Try to shoot for at least 30 minutes, but you can either increase the pace a little bit or uh, increase the amount of time to make it harder. But the basic idea here is that if you're ever at a tournament or basically just doing free sparring and you find that what you have difficulty doing is sparring multiple people in a row back to back, what you're necessarily lacking is that long form endurance. What you need to make sure of is that, uh, especially for tournaments, that you still have some stuff left in your gas tank when you get towards the end of the day because, as it happens, the end of the tournament is when you do all the most important fights. That's when you're fighting in the bracket. That's when you're fighting, you know, for medals. So if you don't have a, a deep enough gas tank that you can just keep going and going and going throughout a multiple hour tournament and you gas out towards the end, you're going to feel that, you know, in a way that's very disproportionate. I myself have this problem where towards the end of a tournament, I don't fight as well as I do in, you know, say the middle. Uh, when you're getting towards the end of your pool and you have to sit down and you just sit there and wait for a while and you cool down, getting back up and getting back into brackets, I often don't feel like I'm as fresh as I was. And this is what I do to try to fix that. So moving on now, um, what I'm going to talk about is the second form of running that you should really try to do, which is sprinting. So this addresses a very different aspect that uh, a lot of people, I think, feel more often, which is that you're getting tired just towards the end of one particular fight. So say that you're sparring with somebody and you're going maybe four or five exchanges deep, and you find that your, your legs are getting tired, your arms are getting tired, you're having trouble holding up your sword, or more importantly, that you're just breathing really, really heavily. This is indicative of not quite having enough uh, burst speed and enough of that like anaerobic uh, cardiovascular strength to just push really, really hard close to your maximum speed and sustain it for long enough to just finish a fight. Um, this is one that I think for the for most people goes away very quickly uh, when they just get used to training. Uh, but uh, in order to train this properly, what you're going to do here and what you're seeing here is that you want to sprint basically as fast as you can tolerate on your treadmill for or you know outside for basically like a minute, no more than a couple minutes. And then what you want to do immediately after that is walk. And what you're training your body to do is to go full speed. Uh, because if you can maintain it for longer than a couple minutes, then you're not going fast enough. But after you've pushed that for a couple minutes, you want to tone it right back down so that you can get your body used to recovering after that. And what you want to do is you want to sprint for as long as you think your hemophytes are really going to be going. I would say like max three minutes. And then rest for as long as it takes to get your heart rate back down to a normal. You want to walk when you're doing this specifically because you want that kind of movement one to keep you from getting completely cold but also so that you don't you know just uh, completely fall over as for the last form of training uh, what I do here is this is specifically running training for armor now what I have is a 45 pound weight vest which is probably certainly more than most people uh, should start with but I wanted to get something that was very very close to what my armor was going to weigh and uh, what I found is that you have to sort of hybridize when you put on a weight vest what kind of running you're doing. For me specifically, I cannot keep any pace for a very long amount of time with that much weight on. I find that my calves just basically ignite after about two minutes, even of walking. And what I have to do is basically find the pace at which I am jogging as slow as humanly possible do it again kind of like the sprinting for one two three minute lengths and then tone it right back down because the reality is that 
just having that vest on for 30 straight minutes is enough of a challenge that even walking is something that you can do to get used to it. Uh, but if you want to try to start upgrading it, you have to take it in bursts. You have to kind of treat it like an interval training. But if you do this, I, I think that it has really, really helped me with just getting used to feeling, one, that amount of weight on my body, and two, helps train the lower parts of your legs in ways that other kinds of running can't really do. Uh, with the other two kinds of running, you're really pushing that cardiovascular strength. But with this one in particular, it raises the bar of how strong your legs have to be just to maintain a pace. And what that does is that when you're fighting an armor later and you're doing, you know, either burst or long form armor fighting, you have the calf strength to just keep you up and keep you moving and keep your footwork going when you have those that 30, 40, 50 pounds strapped to you. So that's going to be it for today. If you'd like to see your own footage featured on the channel, feel free to send me an email over at hemophytebreakdowns at gmail.com. And I hope to see you next time.